Cigar Smokers Worldwide. Once again, you know what we do. We're gonna show y'all another cigar lounge that I came across. Every time I go somewhere, if I come across cigar lounge, I wanna put it out there so y'all know if you're out here and you wanna see a go to a cigar lounge. So right now, we in Myrtle Beach. We outside of Nick's Cigar World Lounge. It's here in Myrtle Beach. So we're gonna just do a walk through and check it out. Alright, let's go. So we have about 115,000 different cigars in here right now. Uh, this is a 2,000 square foot humidor. Uh, we're in the uh, city of North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Uh, we've been here for 24 years. Uh, we also have a bar next door. It's a bar and a lounge where we serve beer and wine. Okay. And that's been a part of our business for about 10 years now. Okay. Uh, we have, like I said, 115,000 cigars. Um, the whole humidor is a... Uh, you know, a 2,000 square foot humidor. We have a filtration system over there, and that's all distilled water that's been filtered about seven different times before it comes out here. We're mainly a heritage-driven company. Now, uh, when you say a heritage-driven company, what, what does that mean? I'm, I'm, I'm halfway new, so yeah, you know, sure. I'm learning it, so what's your heritage? So, heritage implies a company that's been around for a very long time. They're established in the cigar industry. They are uh, not a company that has to make a name for themselves. An example would be Padron, Monte Cristo, Macanudo, that kind of thing. Okay. All right. So you, you know, I briefly came in and kind of talked to you for a quick minute, you know, so hey, you got too many secrets. But you were telling me the way you have, how you have your humidor set up for sure. it with your cigar. So we, like are, we are arranged alphabetically here in the humidor. Uh, we start with the letter A with our Ashtons and our Toro Fuentes in the corner of the room down there. Okay. And we move on to Brickhouse, uh, Butera, CLE, um, and then we just make our way all the way down to Z with our Zenos from uh, Davidoff. Wow. And uh, everything is in the case, and everything that's in the case we actually sell by the box, and those boxes are listed along the walls of this humidor. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if I wanted to get one of these boxes here, you got it open. It's, it's already absolutely inside. everything you see. We have boxes for yes, sir. Wow, man, it's a lot of cigars. Yep. You say you've been here 24 years, 24 years. Yep, man. yep. how long have you been working here? I've been here for about six months now. Six months, yep. Okay, I've had a passion for cigars, I've been a long time customer of mm -hmm. the business, and uh, I figured I might as well start working in an establishment that I enjoy, right? And uh, this is my passion, so I love to talk about this stuff. So how many cigars do you smoke a day? I smoke about four to five a day. Four to five? And uh, I smoke probably three to four while I'm working and another one to two when I go out and work. Uh -huh. um, and of course, it's much more enjoyable to smoke while you're at home, relaxing with something to drink. Right. And uh, But yeah, I smoke about four to five a day. Now, would you say the majority of your customers are in, like, in town or out of state? I, I, what, what would you say your percentage? How does that work? Um, a lot of our traffic is tourism, mm -hmm. um, but we do have a great number of locals that do come in and uh, shop with us. I would say it's probably 60% tourism, 40% locals, okay. um, but everybody's a great customer. Um, but in addition to this retail store that you guys are in right now, we right. also have an online business okay. at nickcigarworld.com. And uh, we ship all across the United States, okay. and uh, we have specials going on all the time, and that's where you can find us online. Oh, wow. Okay. Eddie, I'm going to walk around, look around at the human door, and probably come back and ask you more questions. Now, you said that's the bar area over there, right? Correct. Yeah, so that's our adjoining bar and lounge area. Mm -hmm. uh, our bartender's name is Robin. 
and she's been with us for about a year and a half. Okay. Uh, great person over there. Uh, she serves beer and wine. Okay. Uh, we just can't serve liquor or food because we don't have the license for that. Right. But we do have beer on tap, and we have a selection of wines available as well. What's your house operation? We are open seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Mm. Okay. Wow. We got a lot of stuff here, so I'm going to round around, come back to you, and we're going to talk a little bit more. Yeah, man. I look forward to it. Thanks, I You're welcome, welcome. God, right. It's good. I got this from my girlfriend, and it's really So, like what is it called? Syndicato? Syndicato, yeah. yes, sir. And tell me what you were just telling me about the so, blends again. Syndicato is owned by 40 retailers across the country. Okay. And it's made by Rocky Patel. Rocky does the rolling for the owners of Syndicato. Okay. And this is, again, the closest to an authentic Cuban style that we've got in here. And what makes it that is it's got the blunt front, it's got the pigtail end, and it's rolled in the entu bottle method. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What so can you, you mind? In Spanish, uh -huh. these little tubes. So every single filler leaf in here right. is rolled in its own individual tube. Okay. And then it's put together. So it's four brands that we have in here that do it all the time. Of course, that's Syndicato. You've got uh, Padron, My Father, and Arturo Fuente. Okay. And then other brands will put one or two Entubado style in there, such as the uh, Pilion by CAO is another one. But, um, yeah, that's a terrific Now, I was looking at that wrapper. Now, that's a little light wrapper. Is that is that strength, full body? I mean, what, what, what kind of? This is going to be a medium. That's a medium? It's going to be medium. San Andreas, Mexican on this side is going to be full body. It's got some, some spice to it as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the crow hole here is going to be a nice medium body. Wow. Spice in it. So that's going to have a little bit of spice in it as well. Correct. Not as spicy as the San Andreas, obviously, but... Yeah, you like a milder cigar? Is that correct? I'm kind of, I'm not so much for Maduro. You know, I'm just kind of, kind of in the medium, medium. Yeah. You've tried, I'm sure, the LFDs, the Florida Dominicana. Yes. Okay. Uh huh. I like their Maduros. Right. I'm like you, I like them nice and smooth, a little mellow. Uh, I'm not a heavy peppery guy on the uh, on the Maduro as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you know, that's my cigars that had that. Yeah. I'm gonna pick up me something. Oh, yeah, he knows about the plume. Oh, the plume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, get, we bought every one we could get, man. Yeah. They were so, on the money. what's your opinion on the plume? See, you know, that's the, uh, the big debate of the plume and the, and the mold. Thank you, retired army. Yes, sir. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. He retired too? Yep. Oh. At Fort Jackson and Fort Bragg. All right, yeah. I did 10 years over there. Yeah. But now, what's your take on the the mold and the plume? What, I, I saw us the debate so, on that. Here's our easy way to tell. Okay. If it's plume, it'll wipe off. All right. If it's mold, it ain't wiping off. No matter what you do to it. Okay. Plume is just going to come straight off with your finger. You look at that stick right there. Mm -hmm. it, on, a, on this plant, whatever the wrapper, not mm -hmm. the wrapper, but that. Right. You used to tell it, it was aged for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's not all right. Yeah. Hmm. Because that's been a big debate, you know, mold, plume, that always kind of come up, you that's know, right. so. And obviously you'll find plume happening more on Maduro's uh -huh. than you would on a Connecticut person. Now, why would you say it happened more on Maduro? More oil. More oil based is going to come out of that. Okay. So, and of course, that's what's going to cause that plume. Okay. So you're going to have the oils that come out of the filler through the binder under the wrapper, and as it lays on there, that's what's going to cause that plume. Hmm. The more oil you're going to have in it, the better chance of not plumes. So you just wipe that off wipe and off. keep and it going. It. Uh, which one do you think? Wipe it off and enjoy it. For this gentleman here, yes. Crazy Alice, the Fat Bottom Betty, and the Leather Rose. Now these are all made. Under the Deadwood line by Drew Estates. Okay. And they were made for a lady that owns a bar out in Sturgis. Right, for the bike rally. South, South Dakota out mm -hmm. there. Yeah, okay. Uh, for the bike rally. Okay. And she wanted something that uh, they could smoke in her in her establishment and it would smell great. It wouldn't chase people away. So she went and asked Drew Estate to make her a nice blend. And they did. Okay. And they were such a hit. They rolled out the first original three ladies, which was the Sweet Jane, the Crazy Alice, Fat Bottom Betty. And um, they were such a big hit that they brought them out nationally, and they just killed them. So initially, they just brought them out just for, for her out. Okay. For out they yeah. made, they blend them for her. Mm -hmm. Who Who's the maker of that again? Drew Estates. Drew Estates? Drew Estates. And okay. And, of course, they make acid. 
They make the tobacco specials. They the underground. The underground. Uh huh. Right. Okay. So they got all that. So they really corner the market on on the sweet infusions. Right. This uh, leather rose is their newest lady they added to the batch. I'm gonna say maybe within the last six months. Probably to guess about about six months. Okay. Yeah. I've been seeing that. Yeah, I'm gonna pick that. I'm gonna get that. Uh, That's she said. Amazing. And from the bike rally. There you go. Whole line of cigars. Wow. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna go with uh Leather Rose. Leather Rose. Good call. I get a leather roll for her. The sweetest of the bunch. Okay. Good, good, man. I'm learning a lot from you guys up in there. Yeah. Boutique, because I hear boutique cigars all the time. What exactly does boutique cigars make? Small, small, small amount of cigars, like black label, they make cigars that now you can't get them because they can't produce as many as people want. So they don't make like millions and millions. They they make small bundles, small batches. Is that what it is? Small batches. Small batches are the perfect fragrance. I mean, they're the exact opposite of a heritage. They're a privately, you know, family-owned business most of the time. Dozen company, uh, dozen employees, and um, they don't have the influence that the larger ones have. Um, but because they're smaller, they also can refine their craft better than a lot of the heritage. Okay. So, uh, okay. Southern Draw, Roma Craft, um, Foundation, Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. Those mm -hmm. are a couple of the names of the Okay. Because I hear that term boutique all the time. Like, hey, that's boutique cigar. I'm like, what is the boutique cigar? I'm still learning. I, I started smoking probably maybe 20 years ago when I was at the embassy. And then I kind of stopped. And then I kind of got back in it. I say the last four years, five years, I kind of been back smoking. And now I'm kind of just developing my palate the way. You know, I need to do that. that you should, uh, do you mind if I talk to you a little bit? Okay, so is there a membership on this side of the? Uh, uh, no membership? Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. Yeah. We like the area that we're in. It's a very touristy area. Uh huh. Right. Too much stuff, you know, right. Exactly. Like, like, I like this. Yes. All right. I'm gonna walk through, Absolutely. and I'm probably gonna have a question for you in a minute. Absolutely. Wow. Mm -hmm. You like this here? Very nice. This is nice. Oh, my dear. I know you be ready to get comfortable over there. Yeah. 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 Inside the lounge. This is the lounge area of Nick's Cigar Lounge. Very nice. Yeah. Very comfortable. Okay, we inside Nick's Cigar Lounge down here in Myrtle Beach. And they got a whole lot of cigars in this place here. I mean, hey, what you, oh, go ahead, go ahead. They got a whole lot of cigars. Yeah, man. I mean, they got the boxes, the undercrowns. They have some serious inventory here. Wow. This is some serious inventory. Cuban seed. Mm. Oh, look. Look at that. It got that thing almost perfect. What is the 77. Perfect? 77? 77? Mm -hmm. Okay. 70 and 70. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's good. That's the water purification system. I mean... This is amazing how many cigars they got here. Wow. Man. Now, what he was saying was all the cigars in alphabetical order. 
Even got some of your cigarellos, your black and miles. <laughs> All of the other stuff is back here by itself. In right. This little section. Man. Oh my gosh. I mean, this is a lot of cigars, man. Kevin, did you have a question for me? I was going to ask you what you keep your uh, humidor, the temperature, but I see I see you, you got everything prime. Y'all got yeah, this we thing. we got hygrometers all along the walls. Uh, I think we got four of them in the store total. Uh, but we try to keep it in the mid to high 60s. Mm -hmm. um, the reason we don't keep it at 70% is because it's already so humid down here. So a lot of people take their cigars outside. Right. And it's 80, 90%. So it just already goes higher than 70. Right. So by the time you take it out of our humidor and go outside, it should, you know, stabilize itself. So, okay. So these are just, yeah, these are yeah. singles over here. And now, okay. So when you coming down, is it across the wall or is it just the alphabetic, alphabet just coming both sides? Actually, yeah. So good question. So these are all alphabetic right here. Okay. In the cases. And then all along the walls are also categorized alphabetically. So, for example, all your front days are right here. Okay. And our front days are right next door, right on all these shelves, from the top of the ceiling. All Got the way it. Down. Got it. So, yeah. so you don't have to go too far. You you already know it's exactly. kind of right you're, across. You're right behind a brick house. Right. So brick house is right over here. So. Man, this, I like this. This yeah. is this it's, is it's good. A neat little setup. Right yeah, here. I see. Wow. Mm. I mean, they got a lot of cigars in here. Mm. Man, a lot of cigars. Five count humidors. A last trade. Merchandise. Mm. Nice cigars in this place here. Yeah. Wow. Monte Cristos. Mm. There's a lot of cigars. What you said the, uh, the square footage was, Eddie, again, in here? A little over 2,000 square feet. A little over 2,000? Yep. Okay. Um, normally, the other thing is we also pride ourselves on being one of the biggest Padron retailers in the country. Okay. Um, Padron right now, of course, has a terrible, terrible uh, backwater log that they have in their factories. So uh, the 1,000 series right now are really hard to get. Um, we have some of their anniversarios, the 64s and the 26s, uh, and the top shelf is the family reserves. Uh, with the 1000 series, it's just very hard to get right now, so that's why the shelves look a little bare. I but see the Olivas are doing good over here. Olivas are pretty good for us, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, but normally we have about 400 boxes of drone in the store at one time on any given day. Wow. And uh, yeah, that's including the 1000 series and all the higher price stuff. But at the moment, it's been very hard to Party okay. Yeah. Man, that's that's pretty good there. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty good. Wow. That's pretty good. Oh, wow. Well, well. Mm. Uh, honestly, it helps our strategy. Uh, 